Genesis chapter number 15, verse number 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be stronger than a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. God tells Abram, he said, surely, just, just mark my words, I, 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 these things, I, I'm going to give you a promise, but, but watch this, they're going to be in a land, a stranger, in a land that is not theirs, and they will serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years, but watch what God says. And also that nation, if I say that nation, that nation, whom I serve, will I judge? And afterwards, everybody shout afterwards. afterwards. Afterwards shall they come out with great substance. They shall come out with great substance. Exodus chapter number 3, and verse number 19. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor, shout favor, favor, favor in the sights of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Another familiar portion of scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Many of us can quote it. We don't have to turn there. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. I wonder if you would put your Bibles down. Let's pray right now and ask God to anoint us. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for being in this place today. God, I love you and I thank you for this opportunity. God, I ask that you anoint me because your word's already anointed me. Be clear to thought and clear to speech. God, anoint these lips of hearts and our minds. God, let me be as a ready writer to speak your word. Let us stand. Lord, I bind every spirit of doubt, every spirit of unbelief that's in this building today. I bind it up in the name of Jesus. And God, I believe. I come expecting God something to happen tonight, Lord. Not because of me, but because of who you are, Lord. And I know that you are in the building tonight. And God, I know that someone can leave change tonight. God, someone can leave delivered. Someone can leave filled with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Somebody can leave filled with the Can somebody shout amen? Amen. amen. Have fun, your neighbor. Tell them I am coming out. I am coming out. I am coming out. You may be seated if you're going to help me preach in the name of the Lord. I don't know who this message is for, but I believe that it is for somebody in this building tonight. You have been contemplating giving up. You have been contemplating throwing in the towel because you feel like you were never going to get out of the situation that you are facing. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters tonight, that that is a lie from the pits of hell. We are more than conquerors. And we are victorious. Somebody say amen. We serve a God that is faithful no matter what's going on in this world. We serve a God that is still in control. Somebody say amen. It doesn't matter what's going on outside these walls. It doesn't matter how he is still powerless when it comes to my God that I serve. Does anybody serve a great big God? Yeah. We serve a God that is able to take any problem in any situation and turn it around for your own good. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. We serve a great big God. Can somebody testify to that? Yeah. Some of you are, are looking at me right now when I say that we serve a great big God. It is hard to see that we serve a great big God when we're in a dilemma, when we're in a situation. But if you can be like David and encourage yourself in the Lord when all hell is breaking loose in your life, when your own family wants to stone you, your own friends wants to kill you, but you look the devil in the eye and your enemy in the eye and 
say, whoa, devil, God is still in control. And God is still a great big God. And I will come out of this situation that I'm facing. Amen, somebody. Amen. It doesn't matter what is going on in this world. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. We serve a God that is still in control. The devil doesn't want you to believe that there is a God. The devil doesn't want you to believe that God still has everything in his hands. And God, the devil definitely don't want you to know that at a mention of his name that he's going to flee and he has to let go of what he has hold of right now. He also don't want you to know that there's power in his name. Amen, somebody. Amen. Sometimes all we need to do is just shout the name of Jesus. It's amazing. I don't know about you, but I can speak for myself. I, I see the times that I'm struggling and, and down and out and my back's up against the wall. And I feel like there's no way out. And all of a sudden, I just call upon the name of the Lord. And all of a sudden, God pulls me out of the background to the forefront. And God turns my situation around. doesn't mean that you won't go through problems. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Just because you serve the Lord for a long time doesn't mean that you're not going to go through afflictions and hard times and, and hardship. Matter of fact, the devil, God tells us that the devil's going to come in like a thief and start trying to, dis to kill and to steal and try to destroy your life. Yes. yes. You want to know why the devil is fighting you? I'll tell you why the devil is fighting you. Because the devil knows exactly where you're going and what God has in store. Hear me today, my friend. God knows where you're at. And all you have to do is just call. You have to understand that nothing just happens. Nothing in your life just happens. We, we have to go through things. David puts it this way. He said, where can I go and escape your presence? If I make my bed in hell, you're going to be there. If I, if I go through the valley, guess what? God's going to be there. And David is trying to let us know that there's going to be times in your life that you're going to go through ups and you're going to go through towns. But don't worry. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because if you hold on to God and stay faithful to God, Abraham, that, that, that this was going to happen to his descendants. And, and God tells him that, that they will go through great affliction, not just small affliction. These are God's chosen people. God tells Abraham that they are going to go through great affliction. I have to ask the question, if they had to go through great affliction, why should we? Uh, hello, somebody. But God tells a great affliction that not just for a little bit, not just for a year, not just for a few months, not just for a day. God says 400 years they are going to go through something. Shout something. But I love what God, and God says. God gives him a promise that after they go through these afflictions and, and after they go through heartaches and, and after Alive, that if they just keep faithful to me and keep crying out to me, I will hear their call and I will save them. And he says, he, he makes a promise to Abraham. He says that after they go through this, after the 400 years, he says that I will bring them out. He didn't say he might bring them out. He didn't say, let me see how things works out. Then, maybe, I will bring them out. He tells them that they're going to go through things, but if they just hold on, I will bring them out. And I love that God just didn't stop there. God says, not only am I going to bring them out, but I'm going to give them things to help them on their journey. And I'm not... I'm not helping them. Not only am I going to bring them out, but I'm going to bring them out with great substance. 
sentence. I didn't get this out of a comic book. I, I read it to you in the Word of God. God promised them that when He brings them out, bless them. Right. But not only just some things, but with great substance. Shall great substance. Sometimes when you are in the heat of a battle, when you're in the middle of your situation or whatever you're going through right now, sometimes all you need to know is just you just need to hear the word of God and says that you are going to come out of whatever that you're in. Sometimes you don't have to know how you're coming out. Sometimes you don't have to know when you're coming out. It's something about the word of God that pricks our heart, that God gives us a promise and said, my child, I'm not leave, I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will bring you out of the situation that you're facing. You just need to know that you're coming out. And if you can understand that you're coming out and if you can take your faith and tap in to the promise of God and believe that no matter how long it takes, no matter how bad it is, God gave me a word and God says I'm coming out and I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep standing. <laughs> Hear me today. Sometimes we just need to dust ourselves off and say, devil, you're a liar. I am coming out of this. God gave me a promise. God gave me a word and I'm going to come out of this. <laughs> we just got to stand up and look at him in the eye and say, you push me around a little I'm coming out of this and I'm going to come out with great substance. Yes. Yes. I have been through some things that the devil has told me I would never come out of. In fact, that there have been times that I have even felt like Israel. I would never, ever come out of the situation that I'm in. But if God did not bring me out, I would not come out. But I'm reminded of a scripture said that if God be for us. And if you've got God on your side, you just need to take him by the hand and say, Devil, we're coming out. Some of you don't want to come out because you don't want a responsibility to have to turn yourself around and give up some things in your life. Nobody likes to go through trials and affliction. But if you're going to go somewhere, you have to understand that you have to go through something. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. In fact, the things that qualifies a person for great promotion is a great test. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yeah. If you want to be great, you have to understand you're going to have to go through great affliction and great persecution and people lying on you and people ostracizing you and telling you you're not, never going to make it and keep you down time and time again. But look the devil in the eye and say, devil, you're a liar. I am a child of God. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. A person will never be great until first they are lied on and talked about and falsely accused. You will never enter to your uh, destination or, or your destiny without a great fight or a fight in your life. I want to tell you that in this world it is going to be a fight to get to where we're going because my brothers and sisters, the devil doesn't want you to go where God has in store for you. God tells me, he said, I have prepared
But we need to look the devil in the eye and say, I'm coming out of this. I am coming out. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know what time. But I am coming out of this. Because why? Because I serve a faithful God. In spite of me not being faithful to him. I serve a God that is still has me. And still are holding on to me. And still. Regardless of what you go through. You have to understand this one thing. That you and I have. I promise. I go and prepare a place for you. Say me. That's that's my place. God, God has already prepared a place for me. You and I have a promise that God says, I didn't come to destroy them all, but I came to fulfill the law. I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. God has given us a promise time and time again. If you're here tonight under the sound of my voice and you're battling with a sickness, we serve a God that can bring you out of whatever the doctor says. It's not cure. Hear me today. I don't care what it is. I don't care what cancer it is. We serve a God. If you can tap into if you can tap into God and say, God, I believe in you and on your word.
And it doesn't matter if they get a promotion or not. Come on. God. It doesn't matter if they get a title or not. It doesn't matter if the ball sends them to the back 40 somewhere. They still go out and say, thank God I got a job. Thank God. Lord, I love you. I thank you, Lord. And I'm watching a bunch of sheep, but I'm still going to stay faithful. I'm Watch them. Watch them do something great. We find out the evidence when David was in the back of the wilderness just watching a bunch of sheep. And when the time, when the time came for a new king to reign, God said, I have found a man after my own heart. David wasn't seeking a promotion. David was seeking an almighty God. David was seeking something higher than a king. David was seeking higher, something higher than the, the accolades of his brothers and something higher than the accolades of his own father. David found himself isolated and all alone, but David still stayed faithful to God and saying, God, I don't know when, but you're going to come. You're going to bring me out of this. Amen. No, you may not understand why you are having to go through what you are going through. But God will not take what the enemy meant for you. God will not take it lightly. God, the Bible says that he will turn it around for your own good. Romans chapter 8 verse 28, just in case you think I'm making it up. It says, I know, we know that all things work together for for good. All the good, the bad, and the ugly. God takes it all and puts it in a mixture. And he says, just watch this. You're going to come out. Just stay faithful. Just believe in me. Just All things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, you and I are called of God. Matter of fact, God calls us his children. You and I serve a daddy that's not going to let you do without. God's going to come through. Yeah. We serve a God that is an old time God. Does anybody believe that? Yeah. We serve a God. Your back's up against the wall. And you feel like there's no, nowhere else to go. You feel like the time is over. They're about to foreclose on your house or you're about to lose your job or about to lose your car but and the day of God comes through right amen. at the nick of time can somebody say amen is anybody amen. has anybody ever been there if God has been there for you then I'm telling you my friend God will bring you there for you right now you just have to believe that tonight is no right tonight is the night that you come out of that addiction tonight is the night that you Fifty and twenty. But as as far as you, he thought evil against me. God meant it unto good to bring it to pass, as it is this day to save much people alive. Amen. I want to tell you, my friends. God is positioning you for a breakthrough in your life. If you don't go through heartaches, you don't know that there's a God that's able to touch you. If you've never been sick in your life, you won't know Him as a healer. God sent you through a situation and the, 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 the situation that you're facing right now because God wants to show you a different side of Him. To show you just how bad He really is and He's able to touch any situation in your life. Somebody say Amen. He is setting you up for greatness. I wish somebody could catch what I just said. He is setting you up for greatness. Your setback is preparing you for the greatest comeback in your life. Whatever you're facing today, if you can catch what I'm preaching and have faith in a God that's in this building tonight, that God will see you through it and God will bring you through it and God will bring you out of it. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. 
Amen, somebody. Amen. God did not bring you this far to leave you. You're going to come out with more than what you had when you went into the situation that you're facing because we serve a God of abundance. We serve a God that is able to take anything that is nothing and make something out of it and overflow it with a blessing. Let me tell you something here, me, my friend. The closer you get to your deliverance, your breakthrough and victory, the more hell that will come against you in your life. Can somebody testify to that? The more hell that comes against you, the bigger your blessing is. The bigger your giant is, the bigger the victory. I wish somebody would catch what I was preaching right now. The bigger your giant, the bigger your victory is. Amen. My grandmother used to say, when the devil's messing, God's getting ready for a blessing in your life. Just hold on. of us needs to look the devil in the eye and dust ourselves off and say not today not today not today I, I, I know some of you have fought to get into where you're at right now I know some of you literally some of you are, are getting excited because you didn't have to face hell to get to where you're at right now but some of us had to face hell to get where we're at right now. Because the devil knows that once you get in the presence of an almighty God. The Bible says when the spirit of the Lord is there, there's liberty, there's freedom of what? Freedom of whatever I need, whatever addiction that I'm facing. There's freedom of that. If I could just get in the presence of an almighty God, God will bring me out of it. Increase of demonic activity against you is a sign that Satan has discovered your purpose in life. It's good. Yes. Yeah. Just stay on. I'll say it one more time for your hearing. The, the, the increase of demonic activity against you, everybody say me, yes, me. is a sign that Satan himself has discovered your and life. Yeah. And he knows that you're about to walk in to the greatest season of your life. He knows that one more step, you're about to be the
The devil doesn't want you to know that we serve a God that has mercy and grace for you. The devil doesn't want you to know that tonight you don't have to walk out empty. The devil doesn't want you to know that you don't have to walk Jesus. 